All right, welcome, welcome. I am your host, MIC, and this is another version of Status Quotables. Um, it is Scars That Never Heals edition. So I have a very special guest with me here. I'm gonna have a doctor in the house. We go back like bicycles with the cards and the spokes. And this is, oh, you know what, you introduce yourself. Hey man, my name is David A. Burton. I am from originally from Greenville, South Carolina. I currently live in Cabo, Mexico, but I will be transitioning to Minneapolis, but I'll still be out in Cabo. Um, I mean, I'm still gonna be everywhere I am, man. We're global. I have a company called Global Wellness and Global Wellness is not just a company in practice, it's an ideology. So, you know, I have it tatted right here. We're global. Global is something that you wanna be as, a, as an ideology, man. So we're everywhere and anywhere we need to be. This is why I showed up for my boy, Mike, tonight because hey man i'm always going to be where i need to be because that's the only way you can help people man so i'm david you know i do mental health i take mental health seriously um i think everyone needs to find a therapist mm -hmm. and you know i i'm enjoying this collaboration of mental health and um and hip-hop brother and i do want to say before we get into it okay. when i listen to these songs yeah oh man no lie i was emotional man it almost made me shed a tear um, yeah. because yeah, you, I felt you like you, me. I remember you called me. Yeah, I called you, so you know that I'm not. I'm not stunting for the video. Yeah, I, I really, it really touched me, brother. And the way you were articulating what you had seen, I'm assuming these are true lyrics because you said in here mm -hmm. in, your, in scars that some. You said actually to quote you, you said uh, some people lie in the dark. I rely on my art. You know. Yeah. And, and so I was assuming it was an honest story. So there was yeah, very you, I mean, you had it. You had it. Almost, it says some men cry in the dark. I rely on my art to reveal. Oh yeah, okay. Cry. Some men cry in the dark. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Gotcha. Yeah, I thought that was profound, brother. But, Thank um, you. Yeah, man. So that's who I am, man. I'm David, man. I'm happy to be here, man. So okay. And so the the, the purpose of this um, interview is to um, shed light on. So what I decided to do was when I made this project, scars that never healed. Um, I wanted to shed light on like social and emotional issues um, when it comes to, you know, people in general, you know, and specifically I'm giving it from my point of view, but I also wanted to not just put it out there through music, but I also wanted to put it, you know, give it a visual and also bring people who do this for a living and can not just identify what, you know, like what certain traumas are, certain issues are, but also give solutions or give direction to get to those places, right? And so mm -hmm. um, that's why I have, you know, great people like you who have been in this space doing it for a long time and can definitely be like that beacon or be like that guide to people um, to show them that, you know, the stigma that we in, in, in our community have on mental health doesn't have to be that way, you know? And we can also express it through either, um, you know, music, you know, writing, or just actually finding a therapist and talking to somebody. But, um, right, like you said in Scars, you said you had to move the code. Yeah, moving to the code, we need to change the code. Yep, and make the and make the new code sexy and 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 um and not so stigmatized. Right, 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 right. So yeah. speaking, so speaking of Scars, so you know, give me, you know, give me your thoughts on Scars. Well, <laughs> I already told you, man. It almost had me in tears, man. Uh, but I, but I thought it was so awesome and so transparent and, uh, and I hope I'm not blending the two, mm -hmm. but um, even with scars at the end, when you were talking about some of the childhood traumas and I, when I couldn't really, you have to explain it to me. I didn't really, I couldn't tell if it was a childhood trauma or a trauma you saw as a professional doing work in the field, but you said my sister. So I was assuming, mm -hmm. well, you know, you said my sister. So maybe this happened when you were older because you said then you had to go to work. But you can break that down for us. But so, so got gotcha. So right. So right. So the way in which each verse goes. So the first verse is actually me as a grown man talking about um, the fact that being a man, we are taught to be tough, right? But we're yeah, not got, yeah. to be tapped into our emotional, um, you know, situation. That's why it's like the cry in the dark. That's why, like going, like you know, I said uh, after punching the clock, it's hard to set it off because as a father mm -hmm. and a husband, sometimes I get lost. Always a right. thing, exactly. Yeah, showing emotion don't make you a weakling, just human, right? right? So, exactly. so that's what I focus on in the first verse. I mean, and then in the second verse, it talks about me being like 
five, six years old and um, dealing with the traumas, like my sister having a seizure, right. coming in, police drawing guns on us at five years old, and then me still having to go to school. And the oh, go to school? Okay, yeah, you got I know it. you're an educator, so I was thinking when you went to school, you were at work, but when you went to school as a kid, yeah, like how's your weekend? I can't believe right, right. You know, the cops ran in my house and I got a you know guns drawn on me. I you know like, exactly. Okay, so let me speak about it. Yeah. So um what I think about scars, that that whole conversation was so dope. And now that you broke it down to how you were going in and out of your your man your man, your mm-hmm. manhood and then going into your childhood mm-hmm. and, and and connecting how these things have carried grew, these scars have grown with you. I think it's so impactful, man, because that's what really happens in mental health. We will experience things in childhood, and a lot of these things get carried on because they never get addressed. Scars that never heal. Some men cry in the dark, I rely on my art To reveal the real desires found in my heart The pain, the love, the joy, the stress, frustration The insecurities become the world's entertainment Honest to a fault, I be drowning in my thoughts As a youngin' I was taught to stay hard as asphalt Never being soft is considered as weak Cause the wolves of the world will see you as fresh meat So I take heed, move according to cold Poke a face in this game with plans that never fold Pressures of life designed to bust pipes that make you diamond like in the coldest of nights. I spend a third of my life suppressing my feelings in my line of work. So you gotta conceal it. Have to punch in the clock. It's hard to set it off. As a father and a husband, it's times I get lost. All ways of thinking, rapidly shrinking, showing emotion. It don't make you a weakling, just human. And yeah, I keep it moving cause I could care less about what others is doing Yo, these bumps and these bruises, moments of clarity Road less travel is where it's gonna carry me Only the most high knows living my motto Never get bothered by things I can't control I know where I'm headed, but still reflecting All the trauma I experienced can never forget it It's affected who I am in the present Holding on to these scars will lead you down the dark road if you let it I know where I'm headed, but still reflecting All the trauma I experienced can never forget it It's affected who I am in the present Holding on to these scars will lead you down the dark road if you let it Yo, imagine, right? And so when we experience new things We still address them the way we address them in childhood Because we haven't learned any intervention, you know And so we're, we're an adult using childhood interventions With adult situations Right. right. And so right. Um, I thought that was so profound because like now that you're a man, you're still tucking those emotions like you did when you were a child. Like who you don't you don't know the half of what I've been through and I can't share it with you because, you know, you, like you said in Scars, you said, um, I think I got the verse here. You said, um, as, as a young and I was taught to be hard as asphalt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you understand how hard asphalt is, I mean, that's a very hard structure to the point yeah. that it's so hard that we can, it's a foundation. We can ride on it, walk right on, on it, drive on it, right? So if you're telling at a youngin, as a youngin, that you have to be this hard and you cannot show emotion, and that's part of the code. And a code is something that is integral and it unlocks the door to everything else, right? So if, if your internal reservoir is locked to a position that you cannot share, imagine growing up as a man and saying, hey, I now want to share. It's going to be hard to get to that level of ideology because you have a code that says that's not what we do and that's not right. who you are, right? So, I, I, you know, there has to be a whole new re- reprogramming. So I think that programming is difficult, especially when it comes to trauma. And so... So can you explain, like, trauma to people who, like, you know, maybe in layman's terms who don't really understand, you know, what trauma is, what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, clinically, you know, if there's any clinicians watching this, you know, they'll I'd be remiss if I didn't say that there's like multiple forms of trauma. There's trauma one, trauma two, trauma three, I think there's a trauma four. And then there's vicarious trauma, uh, vicarious trauma, which means that's a trauma that didn't necessarily happen to you, but you witnessed it, like what happened to your sister. You yeah. know, you saw her having a seizure and that was traumatic because you love your sister and yeah. you want to help her, but you don't know what to do to help. You, you don't, you know, so you're put in a traumatic, helpless position. Right. And then these cops bust in the door. And I mean, you're a young and you can't even help that situation, right? So now, but that was happening to you. So I wouldn't consider that vicarious trauma. 
that yeah. would be more like trauma one. Like now these cops are bringing guns onto you. Yeah. So the layman's term for trauma is any dra dramatic event um, that you experience or you see that um, puts you in a place of major dis-ease or major comfort. You know what I'm saying? That will be trauma. So I know you listen, people who are listening to this might be like, well, anything can be trauma. Exactly. That's how powerful trauma is. Like you can watch TV and be traumatized by the shooting in the action film because you see something that gives you a major dis-ease or discomfort um, that is that that um, is so traumatic that it has a um, great impact on your, you know, activities of daily living. Gotcha. And, and how does that, how do we know it's impacting your activities of daily living? Because it may, in, in effect, it may affect your sleep. It may affect, you know, your heart. Like you might have heart palpitations. You might have sweaty palms. You might have dreams. You might have reenactments. You might go to school and not be able to share because you're numb and you don't know how to communicate what you just experienced. But anytime you feel helpless, you go back to that same feeling. So, you know, that's what trauma is. Any, you know, very major episode where you're highly conflicted or at this ease. Wow. Okay. Got you. And so I think um, with that, I know also I said in there, like I said, I was playing with the, the cards I was dealt. I had aces, right? So I tried to use like a double entendre with that, right? So talking about like, you can only play with, like you can only, um, you know, do, know, see, deal with what you have, right? The cards that you are dealt, right? And then if you do have an ace in a hole, then you may be able to get yourself out of it. But also, you know, I was talking about like aces where the, you know, adverse childhood um, experiences, like, like what you were talking about, if people don't know about that. And so like, you know, what I was you know, doing research and I was learning about that and it was talking about the fact that um, you have these different experiences, um, or these traumas or whatever, and you may be like, you know, they kind of shape you, stunt you, and they also manifest themselves in different ways as you get older, right? Right. At zero to 18. And so a lot of us don't, you know, like growing up, we don't realize, like you might even have somebody you was friends with, right? And they like, you'd be like, oh man, that's just, that's just Larry. He just bugged out. You know what I'm saying? He does that. But what you don't know is Larry's had all these experiences and he doesn't know how to deal with his emotions. And he can't right. come, to, come to his friends and talk about his emotions because they'd be like, oh, man, you bugging, you weak or whatever, because that's what we would talk. And right, because he's moving the code. He's moving yeah. to the code yep. that he experienced in life. And that code is making him act accordingly, right? Yes. And Or or the symptoms of that code. Because mm -hmm. let's you, use your lyrics. If I have to be hard as asphalt and I can never share what's going on with me, there's going to be some symptoms that come out of that, some frustrations, some angers some lack of communication, poor right. relationships because you can't communicate effectively. So there's a lot of symptoms. Or like you said, you end up being bugged out and not knowing how to have a strong emotional IQ. So um, a lot of things can happen um, from that. So yeah, you're right. So you where know, do uh, people go? Like, so, well, one, how do you recognize that, right? Because, you know, the, the first, I guess, what do they say? Like the first step, you know, to, to a problem is recognize that you have a problem, right? So what are some things that they would see? You, do, you gave me some physical stuff, like sweaty palms, things of that nature. What are some other things they might, like, you know, like people may see if they're like, oh, this was, you know, traumatic or, uh, or these things affected me and now I'm doing this. Is there some key signs or something like that that they would recognize on their own or like people around them would recognize? Well, well since you're talking to me and, you know, global wellness, you know, I started global wellness because I wanted to do mental health my own way, you know. Okay. Um, and so I'm gonna give you two answers. One will be, a, you know, the standard answer. And then one is gonna be my answer, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So the standard answer is yes, there are symptoms, right? You know, um, a lot of symptoms and some of these symptoms mirror depression, depression, depression symptoms, anxiety symptoms. They mirror a lot of other diagnosable symptomology. You know, like I said, sweaty palms, heart palpitations, um, lack of interest in things you used to enjoy, um, flashbacks, right? Where you constantly, you know, are agitated and flashing back to the major traumatic scene, um, you know, or a better flashback would be, let's say if you were a student in the Columbine shooting, 
where someone came to your classroom and started shooting things up. Now you're in a new school and you hear a door slam and you automatically hit the floor because you have a flashback. Last time you heard the door slam, old boy came through with a black jack on with guns strapped up. So they're like, why are you jumping on the floor? You know what I'm saying? Like, so every, they don't have the traumatic, the traumatic issue. Right? Huh? These could be triggers, right? Triggers, yeah. You know, yeah. These are triggers or symptoms that, hey, your trauma, this is how you can recognize that you may be traumatized, right? Right. You know, because these are what's triggering you, but you're asking me, how do you recognize the symptoms, right? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So the way you recognize that you're having traumatic symptoms is by like paying attention to your behavior, mm-hmm. you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, self-awareness, self you know, and self-awareness is hard because a lot of us don't take time to be present and to be. So it's going to be hard for you to notice what your symptoms are because a lot of times we chalk a lot of our symptomology up to this idiot. Oh, why am I tired today? Oh, I worked long. Well, really, that could be a trauma symptom. Oh, you know, yeah. why are my hands sweaty? Oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe I'm hot. Yeah, I just get like that. I just Yeah, I just get like that. Like, nah, that, that might be a trauma symptom. You know, why every time I hear a door slam, or 4th of July, I'm ducking or I don't like firecrackers. Mm. I just don't like firecrackers. Okay. You know, it took a lot of, I've worked in the VA with a lot of soldiers and it it's taken a, lo- a lot of them a long time to correlate why they don't like the 4th of July. Right. Okay. Because it, it reminds them of, hold on, hold on, this is the fiance. Let me take that. I never put my lady on hold. Hey, honey, I'm Yeah, um, you probably should have played that because people need to know how to build healthy relationships. That would have been a good... Right, yeah. It might have been a good segment. I'm sorry. I didn't know what you was going to say, brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, throw me that ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so what I'm saying is, you know, I don't want to be too wordy because I don't want to lose people, leave, lose people in the verbiage. So my quick answer is, in order to recognize the symptoms that you may not be aware of, you have to become self-aware. And self-aware is is an intentional intervention like you can't just become so you have to practice self-awareness you have to learn how to meditate you have to learn how to be present which also requires um some you know some professional help you know what i mean you know what i mean so the key is always to find a therapist now somebody be like well, well everybody don't need therapy here i told you i would give you the standard answer and my answer my answer is excuse me and since you know, you're an African-American male and I'm an African-American male. And I'm sure, you know, we know that hip hop goes across all genres, but I will speak to us culturally, right? Because yeah. you were speaking about your journey in both of these songs. So yeah. I'll speak to the African-American. There's no African-American who is not traumatized. Right. So <laughs> the answer is if you're African-American and you're like, hey, how do I start getting aware of to see if I got a problem, I'm going to tell you, you got a problem, right? Because if you turn on the TV and why, I mean, really anyone has a problem because if we turn on TV right now, we will all be traumatized no matter our race. And mm-hmm. you need to have someone to speak to to help you deal with these traumas that you're unaware of that are perp- um, perpetuating your mind, your eyes, and your vision on a daily basis. And um, and we don't know how impactful they are because we watch them every day. So we become very desensitized. We're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, but it's not cool, Got especially you. without learning how to put it in its appropriate place. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So we all need, you know, clinical intervention, which is to find a therapist. But That's if you're African American, so how huh? do they do, so like how do they do that? Is it just simple as Google? Is it like yeah, yeah? So how do they find a therapist? First of all, if they're watching this, you got me, baby. So you contact Global Wellness at four one two six two six. 2003 that's quattro uno dos seis dos seis dos zero zero trace but if you didn't want to come to global wellness yeah you would want to go to google and put in find a therapist and then you can put in my your zip code and then there'll be a list of different therapists in your area and then you want to take a second step and you want to read these therapists profile to see which therapist connects with you you don't know if you're going to really connect with them right away but what their profile is saying you want to find some words that they're saying that resonate with what you're interested in and what you're interested in exploring. And then it's like dating. You want to go to their office and meet them because most therapists do a free consultation the first time, you know, like, you know, let's get to know what your issues are. And then you want to build, you know, feel the vibe. 
Because I will tell you a secret. One thing about therapy, it's not all about the fancy interventions. 85% of the effectiveness of therapy to be successful is about the rapport, the relationship between you and the therapist. So you want to find someone you can connect with. And once you do that, uh, find a safe space, you can do the work. Like, for example, um, when, when you said you had to move the code because they taught you not to share your feelings, yeah. one, one of the solutions to that, if, you know, if I could have been a fly on the wall when you were young, would say, hey, no, we don't need to make this a code. We need to find a safe space because you're right. We know that it's been a cultural necessity. We have a history of why we've been taught not to share. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. However, let's give you a safe space that you can share and you still, still don't have to fall victim to the reasons of why you were taught not to share. Because if we go back to slavery, one, one reason it was important for the slaves not to share because certain information could get you killed. Right. Right? Right. You know, for example, if you told them you knew how to read, you could die for that. Yep. You, you know what I'm saying? Yep. You know, or if you, you know, let's move past slavery and go to Jim Crow. If you happen to look at a person who was not African-American in the eye, or much less tell them like, oh yeah, my daddy got a job, daddy could get hung and you can get killed, right? So there was definitely codes put in place. And then if you go beyond Jim Crow into modern day society, if you live in the urban environment, there's another reason why if you're a child, you don't tell certain information because there was still systematic racism put in place. And if you told with the school and said, hey, yeah, you know, my do my 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 sister had a seizure and nobody was there to help them. Then the cops came in and pulled guns on me. And I mean, the school might write you up and get get your call your mom and take the kids away from her because right. they might say she's being neglectful. So yeah. there's reasons why they were telling you, hey, you need to shut your mouth and be hard as asphalt. And, you know, and that became a code. So we have to we have to understand these cultural norms and mm -hmm. then redirect these cultural norms and put safe solutions in place. And therapy is a safe space or a, a, or a pastor or places like that. But I think the difference between your pastors or your churches or your synagogues or your, your mosque is a clinician is a trained individual that can take you through the journey of the exploration of these mental issues. Right. And so, as, as, and the difference is, I feel like spirituality is, a, is another healthy intervention and, so, so, and spirituality can also take you through these mental issues, but it, it doesn't go as deep as a clinician can go because, you know, spirituality, the preacher's not giving you individualized attention to address your concern and to send you down your trauma. He's giving you spiritual information that addresses concerns as a whole, as a system. Versus the individual. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Gotcha. All right, that was that was actually real, real helpful and um, informative. Yo, imagine being five brothers back, Bobby Witt. Tell you take a hit of that Bob Marley spliff. They laughing and joking, you coughing and choking. Chest on fire, heart racing, Jesse Owens. Not knowing if you coming or going. Room spinning, soldiers slimming, everything in slow motion. Remember little sis, only three having a seizure. Eyes roll back of her head, I'm watching and screaming. Couldn't believe it, the cops stormed the crib. Nine M's drawn like a Bosky I pick. Still it's so vivid, older brother corner shivering. Mom yelling, come out so they don't kill him. At the table in the kitchen, holding my crying sibling. Bro in handcuffs, no apologies given. Next day at school, teachers asking about my weekend. Couldn't tell them the truth, I had to pretend. Like nothing ever happened, was taught to keep it formal. Like a nine in the face at five or something normal. Really awful, life changing. Luckily the cause I was dealt, I had a Wake up in cold sweats, long-term effects Staying on point for what could happen next Young and processing, it's more trauma now Feeling suppressed, weakness was not allowed I know where I'm headed, but still reflecting All the trauma I experienced can never forget it It's affected who I am in the present Holding on to these scars will lead you down the dark road if you let it I know where I'm headed, but still reflecting All the trauma I experienced can never forget it It's affected who I am in the present Holding on to these scars will lead you down the dark road if you let it and so I also um gave you another one um light at the end of the tunnel right 
you know, uh, out of the dark, same thing, out of the dark light. Oh yeah, out of the dark, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so with that one, right, it's layered, it's, it's each verse is layered to something different. And so I don't know, you know, if you got a chance to really listen to it, if there is, is there anything um, that stuck out to you about it? Yes. Um, if I had to answer that question straightforward, what stuck out to me about um, Out of the Dark? Mm -hmm. it, you know, when I look at my notes, I, I, I wrote down twice Maslow's hierarchy of need. Mm -hmm. Maslow was a, was a theorist, a psychologist um, back in the day. In, in any undergraduate course of psychology, you'll learn about Maslow. And he believed that humans had a hierarchy of needs. It was like a triangle. Mm -hmm. And in this hierarchy was food, clothing, shelter, love, and belonging, and then you would reach self-actualization, and that's how you became a whole person, right? If you right. had these five components, you would be whole. And, um, it, you know, Out of the Dark really spoke to the journey of going up that hierarchy of needs to reach, finally reaching self-actualization. Right. That's how I kind of saw it, right? Um, you know, because, for example, one of the verses was, um, don't call me your dog because, you know, because you gave me, gave me a bone, you yep. know, and, and it kind of spoke to the fact of like, hey, I'm trying to look for belonging and I'm trying to identify friendship and I'm, I'm, I'm building relationships with people who may do a little bit for me, but they're not technically there for me. And Maslow used to believe that if you didn't have a strong foundation of belonging, it would affect your triangle, right? Because right. that was a very important part to reaching self-actualization and us really needing to feel belong. And I feel as um, an African-American male that you were you were speaking from in your rap, that is a major concern of really, you know, cause there's been a lot of codes put in place that have affected our relationships in our culture, mm -hmm. whether it's male to male or male to female, right? Yep. That we're dealing with now. And, yep. and this lack of being, you know, and, and in our culture, we found other ways to belong. That's one reason a lot of these games start, you know, developing because people yeah. are trying to find ways to connect and be along and yeah. be affirmed, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Um, and and you know, and arming themselves, right? You know, there's a whole we can have a whole talk about that. But the point is belonging. So I thought it was so impactful because you were like, hey, like I'm noticing people that you know we're running in packs. You know, if we use the dog analogy. Yeah, like, yeah, we're dogs. We're running in packs and we're doing all these great things. And you might have found me a bone, but I'm still looking for belonging you know what i mean i'm trying to find my tribe you know when i was in jamaica i met this rastafarian and you know i was telling him about some issues i was having i had me a whole therapy session with this rasta yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying and he basically was saying like yo brother when you find your tribe you will not that you will not have to explain yourself because your your tribe will understand your vibe you yeah. know what i mean and there will be no explanation because there'll be intimate connection and i said this with you when you contacted me and I haven't heard from you in 20 years, you know what I mean? Like a good 18, you yeah. know, and you were like, Hey brother, do you have time? I know you're, I know you're busy. And I said, Mike, I'm never too busy, brother. Yeah. I'm never too busy because your tribe will understand your vibe. I right. understand what you're trying to do. And I would always make myself available as you because, did. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm here for it. You know what I mean? So that's a good example of how your tribe is going to, it's not going to be a resistance with your tribe. And so that's what we want to look for. So that, that stood out for me. And I mean, but that wasn't the major thing that stood out for me in Out of the Dark. One of the major things that stood out for me out of the dark was, like I said, this transition from going up this hierarchy and meeting self-actualization and getting to enlightenment. And when you realize that, hey, a lot of the behaviors that I were not that I was not aware of as a young man yeah. have now came and attacked me as an older man. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here with type two diabetes yeah. based on the fact that I wasn't aware of what I should have been aware of early on. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And and that is an enlightened place. And then I hear you rapping the song about saying, hey, and I'm not going to let this take me out because I'm going to submit and do what I need to do to get my health back, to be there for my family. And so I'm, I'm glad that, you know, and if we look at the world today, wellness and and, and some levels of enlightenment have become a trend. A lot of people are getting more enlightened to paying attention to their health, paying attention to their wealth, paying attention to their mental health. You know, Simone Biles, um, you know, um, 
you know, uh, Naomi. Naomi, you know, Naomi, a soccer tennis player, yeah. um, Michael Phelps. A lot of people are coming out now and, you know, being okay with expressing, you know, things that they've been holding in. Mm-hmm. And so it's become a wave. And so, um, but I like the enlightened place that people are coming to to say, wow, there's some wow. things that we've been overlooking that we should have been paying attention to that yeah. are affecting our overall health. And that's kind of where you went in out of the dark to say, yo, I'm starting to see the light. And now that I see the light, I don't want to turn back and go into the dark. I want to do this work. I want to address these issues. And so yeah. I that was profound think, to me. I think you hit it on the head, right? I think you hit it on the head with like, especially, um, I mean, with, 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 all, with all of that, and especially the last verse of the transition, transitioning and like the realization of, uh, and the actualization, actualizing like, where am I and where do I need to go, right? And mm-hmm. these are the things that, okay, this is what got me here. It hasn't got me to the greatest place when it comes to health wise. So let me try to maneuver myself over. Or like, like today, like this morning, um, you know, I woke up, it was my birthday. And the first thing I did was after I got my kids together, I went to the gym, right? And I went to the gym where actually, you know, um, with, a, with a brother we know, you know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, met me at the gym and we worked out for like an hour or so, you know what I'm saying? He was trying to kill me up in there, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> But the reality of the situation was, um, it, it 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 it's a change, and you know what I'm saying. So all I'm not, what I'm trying to do now is make these things a habit, right? And these things become a habit, and they become you know fun. Then I then I can change the trajectory of what's going on. And part of that is, um, you either do what you see or you do the opposite. And I saw at one time, like you know, my, my parents and, and and older people around me, they had all these ailments, you know, and like I'm like, damn, you're only like fifty. And you act and like and you and you looking like you're about 80, you know what I'm saying? Because right, they right. didn't know any better. Right. And they didn't sleep or hydrate. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those and those that's very important too, because that wasn't taught. Pepsi. It was the Pepsi, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like away from the Pepsi, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever they went for. So yeah, in the song, I was trying to like, you know, show show that these are the things I've been going through. Cause the hook is like, I've been going through a lot of things lately. Trying yeah, to- and that hook was nice. That hook, yeah, yeah. That hook really set me off too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the, you know, it's, and that's the, so with, that's also part, like everything that I put into this project, because you haven't heard the whole project, you've heard um, two songs of it. Everything is cohesive and it all goes back to the common theme of these are the mental and physical things that um, I've, and emotional things that I've been experiencing and I'm, I'm sharing them now. And this is real personal. And, yeah, and so, you know what else, you know what else was um, deep that you said, you said a line, you said, um he said uh oh snap i think he said in my life i find i found my niche i found my niche but um but but they want me to switch okay got you yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm missing a couple of words there, but yeah, I got you. You were basically trying to say, "Hey, I think I found my niche," but everybody wants me to switch. I guess meaning that, hey, okay, okay, cool. I see I'm reconnected that. to the rap. I'm reconnected to hip hop, but yeah. I'm older now. People are like, "Yo, like throw that away." Like, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You done? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. you done? And you're like, no, but I found my niche, and they keep telling me I want to switch. And yeah. clinically, what I thought was so deep because I thought that was a great example of one, the lack of safe space, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, to really let somebody know what you're really feeling and what you're really passionate about. Yeah. And two, the the need for affirmation, right? Because in order to be beneficial in growing going up this hierarchy of needs, if you look at everything that's needed, it's all a, a level of affirmation. Like a home is affirming, right? You feel right. safe. You got a roof. Food right. is affirming. You feel safe. You're you're fed. You yeah. know, um, clothing is affirming because you're like, oh, I'm not naked. You know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. not. You know, I have clothing belonging and friends and love is affirming because you're like yo i feel connected to something right and then self-actualization is affirming because you're like yo i became exactly what i wanted to become so yeah. he was a he were you he was you saying yo I, I found my lane found my niche and they want me to switch i'm trying to fight for self-actualization mm-hmm. you know but people but the are affirmation wanting me, isn't there the affirmation is but the there. affirmation isn't there yeah, the affirmation right there. yeah and, and i and i and i wrote down here i said um you know, affirmation, self, oh yeah, self-actualization, yeah. So um, 
Oh, but I'm going to add something to it. I'm going to go real deep with you, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're traumatized, there's a thing called trauma and there's a thing called post-traumatic growth. Okay. Now, trauma is when, you know, the trauma is affecting you and you're not growing from it. Like you're having all those symptoms we spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. Post-traumatic growth is like when you take this trauma, like let's say the trauma you had with your little, um, with your daughter, with your sister, Mm -hmm. when you were young and you felt like you can share it well post-traumatic growth would look like when you grew up you became a medic because now you want to yeah. help people and okay. you say i never want to be in a place where somebody has a medical need and i can't help them anymore and mm -hmm. i'm gonna be strong in that area and i'm gonna be able to provide cpr or whatever is needed so i either get classes in cpr or i, I go to medical school and learn how to change right. and help people okay. medically. Okay. so i you grow from the trauma right you know what i'm saying you make it strengthen you and so here were you, here was you being traumatized, like, hey, I've, I've heard I got diabetes, all these things I was doing wrong. And then I'm reconnecting my passion and people are telling me I'm wrong. You, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and it's oh, like, yeah. yo, I'm trying to grow through my trauma. Yeah. And people are, are, are trying to block this growth yeah. because even if I don't become famous, I'm still growing because I'm, because real success is peace. Yes. And if I can do what I love to do and I'm at peace, peace. I am successful. That's it. Like, I, I can't be met. Like, the thought that that's, you, I think you hit that on the head because everybody has their own path to walk, right? And so when people, people a lot of times judge their path by others' path. But that's not the, that's not the direction in which you may not be meant to go. That's not the, you know, like, you don't understand the, like, how that person, even though they're walking on the path and it looks like they're, they're ascending and, and you're not ascending, that has nothing to do with you. As something like you have to figure out what's your what your path and peace looks like is different from somebody else's. But when you compare it to mm -hmm. others, um, then you feel it, it makes you either feel like uh superior or inferior. Right. And so mm -hmm. when you come to people with, hey, this is what I'm doing, and they don't and like in their mind, like we just going with music, right? You know, because this is hip hop, right? So they're going with hip hop. Like hip hop is like the only genre in which like being old, older is whack. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. Nobody rock and that. roll. Yeah, no one's the Eagles. Ozzy Osbourne be on like damn near in a wheelchair, rolling him, throwing them up, propping them up on stage, and just playing his music, and he's still selling out shows. Nobody says anything about that. Even with R and B, as they get older, nobody says anything about that. But when it comes to um hip hop in itself, because it is still like the, one of the youngest genres um to date. But still, the most success, like now, one of the most, well, the most successful people don't understand that they can't see it. You know what I'm saying? Because the four, like mo a lot of the um, founders, they're like, you know, now they're getting older and like maybe passing, but they're still alive. You understand? Yeah, so, I they, think, but I think that's by design. Yes, that's true. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. That's true. And I'm, I'm gonna explain what I mean. Um, because I think at one point in time, the culture owned hip hop. And then once hip hop proved that it, it could be monetized, mm -hmm. it was taken from the culture. Cause right. I don't feel the culture runs hip hop anymore. Yes, yeah, fact. If that makes sense. Yeah. And and the people who now run the culture, run hip hop, it doesn't benefit them to have old hip hop artists because they're trying to kill the youth. Right, right. With the, yeah. with the new wave that's going on right now. Yeah. Yeah, so they want young people so they can kill young people, right? Because the more we annihilate that race of people, then we have done our job. Because, and I'm getting a little too deep, but, you know, and I, I hope I don't offend anyone, but I, I really think this is about depopulation, right? Yeah, yeah. And what tools that we can use to depopulate. And hip hop has been one of the major tools that they've used to depopulate. If you even listen to how hip hop has changed and what we rap about. There was a time that we had so many different hip hop artists who had a range of things to rap about. Mm -hmm. Now everyone raps about the same thing: murder, death, kill, and 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 do drugs. Right? Yeah. That was not always what hip hop was talking about in the early in the early nineties, early eighties. I mean, late eighties, early nineties, even some of the two thousands. You still had genres. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cold yeah, with, 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 there was subcultures. Yeah, there was subcultures within the culture. Yeah, yeah, there was you could listen to many different types of rap, and you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, some call it conscious rap, so you know, but it was just that, but you know, Boogie Down Productions, you know, Dos, Dos Effects, like they all had different things they were rapping about, 
you know, everybody was in the hood, thugged out rapper. Everybody wasn't pulling a gat on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, so so I think that's by design. But yeah, you know, I, I'm I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And, and the reality of the situation is like, um, two things can be true, right? But but the way in which we like when it comes to this music that we've been funneled and stereotyped, they put pigeonhole us into one way of looking, right? When the right, reality right. is when we leave, when we don't, when we're not listening to the music and we're amongst each other in the world, we all, we're not monolithic, right? We all don't think the same. We're all not vanilla. So all of, we, we know people who have maybe had that experience, but sometimes some of those people to us are some of the greatest people. You know what I'm saying? They may be terrible to somebody else, but we also know people who go to work every day and take care of their family. We also know people who don't do that, but but there's a, a there's a wide range and there's various stories to tell, but they only want you to tell one story, right? Mm -hmm. one, st one story and that's to sell like, if, if the movies only had action movies, it would die off faster. You'd be bored, right, right. Yeah, we'd be real bored. It'd be real. It's real linear, yeah, that's so Yeah, linear. yeah, it's real linear. But but with for some reason, when it comes to this, everything is a uh, murder, murder, kill, kill, when it, you know, when it comes to hip hop in general, right? Right, and, but, and I like the what you bring up, the ageism. Yes. In hip -hop. Like, if you, you know, one, nobody's gonna want to go see an old artist unless he's like an icon, you know what I'm saying? And two, if you're an old artist trying to get in the game, yeah, you're gonna face with, excuse me, resistance, because they're gonna automatically say like, what? You know, but we don't do that in any other genre of music. There's old country no. stars and can't, Jimmy, you know, everybody still goes to see them. So I like what you bring up. So, and, and that can make it hard for you saying, hey, I wanna tap into my passion. And then I look around and I'm not getting any affirmation or any belonging where people are supporting Mm -hmm. you know my, my my journey it's not a safe space right yeah. and so um i thought that was very profound in out of the dark to say hey i'm trying to move to an enlightened place and as i'm getting enlightened people are still trying to pull me into the dark they don't want yeah, me yeah. to 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 become enlightened right mm -hmm. because then if i if i become enlightened i'm going to see that you're really not safe for me you, you're really not here for me right because if you love me, why would you want me to switch when I found my niche? Yeah, <laughs> you know and, that, I mean? and that's the thing. Like, in the truth of the matter, and, and and that's very interesting that you say that, because we also need to let people know that it's okay, right? It's okay to grow and necessarily outgrow or grow apart things, as long as you are growing, because it is your journey. And sometimes, and sometimes it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just that you have to, like you say, find a safe space um, to figure out who you are. And then grow, and if you can come back to you know those 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 people, or you know what I'm saying, um, then and it and it still works, then it was meant to be. If not, it's okay, because they got to find their way. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah, and that's the thing too. We we try to hold on, like depending on who you are, we try to hold on to things a little bit too long, right? Yeah, and you know, and I and you know why we do it. You know, and I can understand why we do that because especially in our culture. And I know you feel that people do that in general, which is true. Um, but okay, let's speak in general, not just in African culture for other viewers that may be listening. In our culture, we do hold on to things so long because that's the, in the five levels of Maslow, belonging is like right before self-actualization. Wow. So it's very, it's a human need to want to connect, right? So anytime we're connected to something, and it looks like it's leaving us and not appropriate, we don't want to leave it because belonging is so important. Like, well, if I let you go, then I no longer belong. So I don't want to be out here without any levels of connection. So we hold on to things too long. But what we have to realize is in order to grow, we have to let go of things. Look at a tree. When a tree bears fruit, when the fruit is good, the fruit is connected. When the fruit is no longer good, the fruit falls off. Right. When it's too ripe, it, it falls off. You got to let it go so something else can come and grow that is necessary. And I know, you know, it doesn't feel good, but we have to start training ourselves to say, hey, when you see that the time is up, you have to trust that your need is going to be met even when you let it go. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? And I think therapy is, you know, once again, we got to come back. The solution is always going to be for me. Find a therapist because he can help you go through these journeys and, and illustrate this for you and help you put it in the appropriate places if you find a good therapist not all therapists are made equal you know so i don't want to 
set you up. You know, you, you know, it's hard to find a global wellness and a David Burton. You know what I'm saying? But you know, exactly. and I'm no stunt. I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I put intention behind this work. So, mm -hmm. you know, and everyone doesn't do that because we know that like rappers, every rapper is not made equal. You yeah. know what I'm saying? This yeah. is you can rap, don't make you an icon, don't make you yeah. a low G. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? You know, every rapper, I'm not going to listen. You know, I haven't listened to a rap in a minute that almost made me cry. Wow. I, you like, know, I, and I appreciate that, man. Like, and I, I mean, to the point that I had to call you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did. Like, and I, 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 I called you. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and you my man, but yeah, I'm yeah. harder on my homies. Yeah, I'm harder. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I would have been like, Mike, you whack, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nah, and you I wouldn't know, expect nothing less, man. I wouldn't expect nothing less. And that's you know, like, I, I like that you're doing what you love, but you think you're lame. So keep it in the yeah, house. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I keep it in the basement. Right, keep it at the basement. <laughs> but, yo, it moves me, bro. But you also speak in a language I'm interested in, so maybe that helped. That you know? that also helped, but it's also like this is, um, been like damn near my life's work for for a while. Like you know, I'm in the I'm in the education bit field in business, but it's also a business of service, right? I'm also um a person that um you know part of my job is to solve figure out what the problems are. And solve the problems when they happen. Come, you know, get resolution um, for everybody involved. You know, and do mediation, right? And you know, the academic Olivia Pope. Right, right, yes, right. <laughs> I <laughs> never even thought about it like that. Yeah, and I do the restore, like, and I do the restorative part. So it's not just the. This is, you know, I find out what happened. We do this, and it's punitive. Is also like, how can we heal from this, right? And then I also have a team with me who goes into the like deep and you know into the the counseling and the therapeutic parts. So with that I've been doing this for and I also been a teacher you know for 15 years, right? So I've also and before that I ran a group home. So this has been my life's work. So I decided to um um also but you know me from you know from when we went to college together and you know all the music stuff we did, right? So that's also been a passion of mine which I had to put on pause when we explained that, you know, and I've explained that in other interviews and stuff like that. But my, my point is I figured out a way to try to marry them to marry them both. I didn't just want to say, Hey, look at me. I got some music out here, but, but I also wanted to help, you know what I'm saying? And also hopefully this heals people, right? Because music is a soundtrack to life. And that was right. my and, and your music has transitioned. Yes. It's transitioned to it. And, and that's fine because we all, and that's the thing, right? I don't, they're like the audience for the genre that we're in, it has grown. These people have grown up, people have like have families, like you're talking about getting married, like you have all these other things, right? So the things that were important to you in your 20s may not be important to you in your 40s. So therefore, why wouldn't you want to have a soundtrack to your life now that is reflective of where you are now? Right, and I would argue that even though you may be an older, older artist, the, the the message that you're sending now is really resonating with the younger artists because the younger artists is more mature than we were when we were their age That's because exactly. they're dealing with higher level traumas and they're looking for for music that really speaks to what they're going through. I mean, here's an example. I mean, Juice World came out of nowhere and blew yeah. up. And, and really, when you listen to Juice World's music, he was really pretty much doing therapy on on wax right. like you did in both of these songs yeah. when he's telling you about all the traumatic events he went through and 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 how he experienced mm -hmm. these traumas and so many people were resonating right. with like hey i'm going through that too and you know and so i i think this this mental health piece this project um would speak resonate with a lot of younger folks right now because that, that's what they're experiencing and, and it's, it's very it's a very um, active concept right now. Got you. And so I, d I definitely appreciate that. And like, uh, you know, I, I think that people will be um, pleasantly surprised when they get to hear it in its totality, you know, and um, I also wanted to, this is also part of um, putting some legs up under it to give it like, a, you know, a, a deeper meaning so people can understand because there's a, you know, hundreds of thousands of people every day saying, listen to this, listen to this. But um, sometimes you need to feed your soul with the things that'll help you grow, right? So all I'm doing hey, is trying to provide that. Yo, this is, this is, I mean, now I'm talking money, but yeah, but I'm also talking mental, I mean, I mean, 
internal wealth. Mm -hmm. But this idea you have is is an external wealth um, situation is, is mm -hmm. very, it's a rich idea mm -hmm. externally and internally. And what I'm trying to say is you pretty much made a hip hop album and now you're putting pretty much a workbook to the album mm -hmm. and, and dialoguing and breaking that down and, and putting actual um, exploring what's sparked about the album and then giving people working solutions of how to address the concerns that you ex were exposed to in the album. I mean, that's that's not really been done. It, what has been done is rapper ha rappers have rapped and they've gone on certain podcasts, well, before podcasts, they've gone on certain interviews and they say, hey, break down these lyrics for us. Like, what were you saying here? But the, al the artist breaks down the lyrics but then there's no work around the lyrics. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. what you're doing is saying, not only are we gonna break down these lyrics, but now we're putting work around these lyrics mm -hmm. and the work that we're doing is real work around work. education, yeah. mental health. And, and so, I mean, this is a multi-million dollar situation we got going on here, man. And even if it doesn't, um, you know, come out and show up in the monetary sense, yeah. it is definitely gonna show up in the internal wealth sense because mm -hmm. it is fulfilling and and I felt it, and I'm just not saying it because I'm your man. You Thank you, and, and, and you know that's something we'll build. We can build. We can continue to build on and talk about like how we can materialize that. You know, off off the you know off the interview. So we yeah off the yeah. interview. But yeah, man, I think you know like really, I, I really thank you for your time. Is there anything else you would like to add? Or anything else you'd like to say? Um, anything else I like to add? Oh, there is one thing I like to add. Yeah. Um. I think the most important thing about trauma, and you brought it up in scars, and I think it's the stigma, it's not the stigma, it's the issue with not seeking support. And, and I'm gonna explain what I'm saying. In scars, the, the hook says scars that never heal, right? And you're right, if a scar is not taken care of appropriately, it won't heal, right? Right. right. However, the journey that I see that you were trying to get through through this music was saying, hey, how can I heal? I'm seeing ways I need to get enlightened, but what are the interventions I need to put in place? And I, in my first intervention and the most impactful intervention is find a therapist because scars can heal. If yeah. you get a scar and you take care of it and you give it air and you put a bandage on it and you put the appropriate nearest thorn on it and then you take the nearest the bandage off and let the scar breathe, over time that scar will heal and then you put the cocoa, the, not the cocoa, but yeah, the cocoa butter and the coconut oil on it. Matter of fact, some scars will actually go away. You can remove birth, birthmarks with cocoa butter and coconut oil. If you put the appropriate attention to it, you can get rid of um, pregnancy scars. So what I'm saying is with the appropriate intervention, these scars can heal. But a lot of people's scars don't heal because they don't put the appropriate intervention in place and the scars carry on throughout their life. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they have to be stuck with that code that they incorporated at an early age. But, hey, it's okay to break the code. It's okay to establish a new code and do the work. Find someone to help you because you don't have to live with those scars. Definitely, that's it. That's it. And you can come out of the dark and find the light. Right. <laughs> I like the way you put that together, right? And so that's that's a great that's a great way to end this. And also for people that understand scars is situations come and reality shifts, right? So when the situations come, your reality does shift, but it but it doesn't have to be um in a negative way. You just have to um have the tools such as therapy, such as you know, um, um a good tribe like you spoke about earlier in order to reach out in order to help you get through the shift in reality so that way those scars can't be so um i'd like to thank you um my brother dr david and um i am uh, mic and look out for um the album that's coming soon scars that never heal thank you eyes roll back of her head i'm watching it screaming couldn't believe it the cops stormed the crib nine m's drawn like a boski i pick still it's so vivid older brother corner shivering mom yelling come out so they don't kill him at the table